Spirit 1053, this is Erica. Hey, Erica. It's Bradley Collins and Chrissy Metz. How are you? Hi, Bradley. Hi, Chrissy. I'm great. Hope you guys are. We're doing great. Thank you. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Okay, so Chrissy, I feel like I know you because we've laughed and cried together. Um, so this is a special moment. <laughs> oh, well, consider me a friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. How has playing Kate changed your life? We'll just have to start there. Oh, wow. Probably in every way. Obviously, I have a little more financial stability to go visit my family, which is nice. Yes. Um, I have opportunities that I never had before as far as, you know, creative opportunities. And it's just allowed me to reach people in ways I've always wanted to. Wow. Yeah, I'm so grateful for that because I um, always felt sort of like very misunderstood. And I feel like through creative projects and through roles that I've played that I'm able to connect with people and I feel less alone and I hope it makes them feel less alone. Oh, that's beautiful. I believe so many children are going to feel less alone and more loved when they read your new book. When I talk to God, I talk about you. So how did you two come up with such a sweet idea for a book. Bradley and I, when we first started getting to know each other, we would just, you know, talked about what was important to us and what we valued. And we always talked about how prayer was really important to us and how really creating that self-esteem and self-confidence through young children, how important that was, because that's how they walk through the world. And ultimately, that's how we as adults walk through the world. So it was really just about having that message out in the world for everybody to hopefully latch on to and hopefully understand that they're, you know, important and purposeful and loved and that you could do that through a gentle introduction through prayer and then also through an unconditional love of a parent. I can't think of a more wonderful message to put out into the world right now. Yeah. Bradley, how do you collab on a book? How does it work? I mean, do you meet for coffee? Do you do the Zoom thing? Take us through the process. Well, we, we don't meet for coffee because we're dating. So. <laughs> oh! Yeah. That would be a little different, but we did have to Zoom because she was in L.A. filming This Is Us, and I was in Nashville writing songs. So we did do a lot of collaboration over Zoom, just going back and forth online, and it was just a lot of back and forth working through everything. One of the things we did over Zoom was our publisher presented us with illustrators, and we both separately landed on the one that we have, Lisa Field, who we think is just absolutely incredible, and we're so lucky that she was available for this book. And that was the biggest collaboration, really, was figuring out the illustrator because the words were kind of already there. We'd written two or three different versions, and we just had to pare it down to make it more and more streamlined for children. What a meaningful thing to write a book for children that expresses God's unconditional love. And I'm wondering about your experiences with that. Chrissy, when have you felt God's unconditional love? Oh, goodness. I mean, I feel like you know, we all have journeys and stories, but I, you know, I had some, some tough years and some tough, challenging experiences. And just when you're sort of in the thick of it and you think, oh my goodness, I can't get through this. I just feel like unconditionally loved and on a path and on a journey that might be, you know, difficult at some moments, but aren't all of our journeys difficult, Yes, difficult at some moments. And just in that way that I'm feel like I'm being used as a conduit for a bigger message. And so I just feel that wholeheartedly in, in all the things that I do. Mm, that's beautiful. Bradley, how about you? Well, for me, it was in the pandemic. I just left a job. I'd been working it for 16 years and I was really at a crossroads, really at a low point in, in my life. And I had started writing songs and I had liked it, but I kept looking around me and seeing that no one else had done it this way. No one had worked for a company for 16 years and then gone into songwriting and had any kind of success. But I was praying and I was scared and it came to me through a prayer that just because nobody had been on this path before, it doesn't mean it's not my path. Yeah. And that really was a message of unconditional love to me that I carry with me now, even going into co-writes and other writing things that, you know, no one has done it this way and that's okay because it's, it's the way that I'm supposed to be doing it. That's always something that's really, I come back to and willingly share with people because it has such an impact on me. Wow. I picture this book in so many Easter baskets. What does this season mean to each of you? I mean, Easter, you know, Easter is the re is the rebirth, yes. right, of, of everything. It's yes. the rebirth of Jesus, the rebirth of nature. You know, I don't know how the weather was in Seattle, but we had a, we had a really bad snowstorm here, and we we're seeing a lot of the 
plants and everything that we didn't think were coming back are starting to come back now. And it just shows the rebirth all around us of the things that are good and it's yes. coming back. And it's just such a positive time to be outside and with friends and, you know, getting ready for great spring here. Yeah. And just beginning anew, whatever it is that it might mean to you, you know, if you're starting a new career or something creative or even gardening, you know, whatever it might be is that there's just this beautiful, overwhelming thought of beginning anew and life and growth and success in a way of happiness, at least for sure for me. So how did you two fall in love or is that okay to ask? Um, yeah, well, we met on a dating app during the quarantine Wow! and here in Nashville. And interestingly enough, of course, I went down the internet rabbit hole and discovered that Bradley and I had all the same friends and we just had never met. Oh. And, you know, we really had the chance to get to know one another because we didn't really <laughs> go on dates because you couldn't go out. You were quarantined and sequestered into your houses. So we spent a lot of time on the phone and um, <laughs> Zoom and FaceTime, you know, those kinds of things and really got to know each other. So I think, you know, I mean, to know Bradley is to love him. Aww. But um, yeah, it was just like really getting to know one another, which was really nice because sometimes we don't get to do that all the time. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, because it was quarantine, we couldn't go out really, but we'd drive into the country and go to on peaches and preserves mm -hmm. and, you know, the most wholesome <laughs> things ever. So yes. it was really a great time to talk. And a lot of that conversation led to this book we have out now. Oh, I'm so happy for you, too. And OK, full disclosure, now that I know you're dating, I'm scrolling through Instagram while I'm talking to you here because I want to know more. Were you guys on Kelly Clarkson together? Yes. Yeah. Yes, How much fun was that? I mean, I just watch her little videos on Instagram and I'm like, oh my goodness, that must be so fun. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've become sort of friendly with her because I've done her show so many times. And, you know, she's obviously in the music world and I just think she's great. And she is just a lot of fun and so down to earth, which I really appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, next time you're on the show, tell Kelly that I said hello. <laughs> I will. All right. Well, speaking of music, I understand there's a companion album that goes with this beautiful book you've written. Would you share a little bit about that? Yeah, the album is called Pray for This Day. And Lisa Fields also did the illustrations on it. But Christy and I wrote all 10 songs with our friend and collaborator, Bill Barton. It's a completes the thought of the book. There's a plan for all of us, and it's a, it's a lullaby album. You can play it for your children after you read them the book, and it sends them off to a gentle slumber. But there's some fun songs on there, too, but that we're getting good response from from children. Which my nieces and nephews got a chance to sing on, which is oh, so fun. Okay. And, yeah, we just wanted the through line of the message of the book to go into song. Song, obviously, and singing and writing have always been really important in both of our lives, Bradley and I. And I initially thought, oh, we should just write something instrumental for the audiobook. And then it turned out we had a lot more uh, story to tell through song. So Aww. you can check it out on all of the streaming services now it's been out and um you know we're just really excited for everybody to hear it oh me too and hey isn't being an aunt the best i love that role the best <laughs> the best it's so much fun well chrissy metz and bradley collins it has been a joy thank you for being here and can't wait to follow your love story now that i know about it <laughs> Oh, well, thanks. Thank you for having us. We hope to visit Seattle at some point. Oh, I've never been up there. Neither have I. Come see us. It's beautiful. The best time to visit is between July and October. Okay. So, but it's beautiful good to know. all year round. There's just something really special about our city. That's what I hear, and I... I'm a huge Seattle music fan, so oh, good. there's plenty of reasons to come up there, yeah. And yeah. right down Edmonds. It's where I live. It's this little sweet Hallmark town, and honestly, it's my favorite place on the planet. It's a well-kept secret. Edmonds. Edmonds, okay. Oh, we'll be there. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a joy to know you both. Take good care. You too. Thank you.